Hello and welcome to the Alpha Software Demo and Q&A webcast. I'm Dave McCormick, VP of Product here at Alpha Software. And today I'm going to be giving a presentation also answering some questions. You can submit those questions in the questions box of the GoToWebinar control panel, or you can send them into guides, G-U-I-D-E-S at alphasoftware.com. And something I'd like to bring up about guides is that we have had a few people on vacation and a couple people onboarding here. Uh, so our guides line has been uh, unusually slow <laughs> in answering questions. We hope to have everything taken care of by the end of business on Friday. So if you don't hear from us by then and you've got a question in for us, uh, please send it in again. That way it makes it back up to the top and we'll try to get it answered as quickly as we can. Thank you very much for your patience on that. Okay, so uh, before I go any further, I'm going to move to the next slide, but I want to let, I'm going to ask if you can hear my voice and if you can see my screen, do you see a light bulb on your screen? Just answer in the questions box and then I'll know that we're good to go. Yep, okay, wonderful. Thanks very much. So for the last, oh, I, I don't know, a couple of months, um, various webinars have been on the whole notion of an out-of-the-box Alpha Anywhere application. In other words, what's a really quick and easy way to get an application just going from scratch with everything that you need to get it deployed so that you can have a working proof of concept? So let's take a look and see what we have sort of covered so far. If we're taking a look at an alpha anywhere out of the out of the box application, what would we need to have in an application like that? Well, you'd want to have a login system ideally with two-factor authorization, as that's become the modern standard. You'd want to have the ability to manage users so that an admin could do things like uh, add people or remove people from the system or give them different permissions. Of course, you'd want to have some sort of database behind it to keep track of the data, not just the data from the login system, but other data that you'll need for your application. It should be mobile friendly, not just web friendly, as most applications are accessed both on web and on mobile. And we need, needed to have a good um, presentation there. It needs to be expandable so that you can add in your own content. After all, you don't just want to log in a management system. It needs to actually do something useful. So whether that is uh, forms that you've got set up for allowing uh, employees to log in and log certain information, or maybe display graphs, or maybe check on account information, or, or whatever it is that your app is designed to do, you need to have a place that you can put in your own content there. It needs to have visual appeal. And today, is this is all I'm really going to be talking about, is visual appeal. And uh, we're going we're gonna to go into that in some depth, because finding the places that you need to get to to make tweaks to the visuals is sometimes complicated. And it is even more complicated when you're using something like the security framework genie that's actually built out all of these interfaces for you. Since the system has built the interfaces, you don't necessarily know how they were put together. And today we're going to be taking a look at exactly how they are put together so that you can make changes to create an application that's really truly suited for, for your use. We had talked in the past about um, easy and free deployment options, and we referred to a company called, uh, I believe it was Ingrock or Ingrick. Hang on, let me find it here real quick. But that was kind of an interesting one. And we have gone, let me just escape back out of here. I think it was like around here. Nope. All right, hang on. I'm just going to flip through my slides real quick. I'm going to put this on pause, though, because it's going to be uh, distracting. Okay. Okay, hang on. On way back. Ah, here it is. Wow, this was a while ago. I showed this probably eight weeks ago. But if you recall, we talked about a company called Ngrok is the name of it. And Ngrok allows you to serve applications from your local home machine or, or home office machine without having to do things like punch holes in the firewall 
or have a permanent DNS or things like that. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, uh, we, are, we do have a webinar on that uh, showing you how to use the development server that you can actually host yourself and let other people take a look at your applications. We are also furthering that by taking a look at adding that technology ourselves, the NGROC, uh, into Alpha Anywhere. That's just sort of an, an upcoming thing that we're looking into. I just wanted to let you know about that. So going back to our list of things that we wanted included in our application, okay, should be right here. Um, the ability to do easy scaling. Well, we've talked about Alpha Cloud as one of those options. Another option is to, to use bigger development servers like the Alpha Anywhere uh, IIS server. Uh, you can deploy it on bigger machines. So of these things, we've covered almost all of them. And again, the one that we haven't covered the most is visual appeal. So let's take a look at that today. This is the application that is built by Alpha Anywhere for you. This, it, it's the one on the left, basically, the tabbed UI component. In order to make this mobile friendly, we did a webinar on how to take this tabbed UI component and recreate it using a UX component, which is a fairly easy thing to do. But regardless of whether you're using the one that Alpha created for you or the one that we reworked, the UX component, you still have the same login page, which I'm going to show you here. So this is the login page to our application. And right away, we want to make some changes to this. So one of the changes that we'd want to make would be just simply the background color, the background graphic. Um, the other thing we want to make changes to would be probably the actually the field labels themselves. For one thing, if you're going to ask for a user ID, but you know that the user ID is going to be the email address, it's much easier for the user to simply specify email instead of user ID so that they don't think that they have forgotten a piece of information. Next up, this is sort of an, an old style button, this capsulated style. So, you know, again, this is just a matter of taste, but we kind of like to make this modern, maybe make it square, give it a solid color. These down here, these are links for forget password and create account, but they're not standard link colors. And it's actually good practice if you're gonna make something a hyperlink to make it the color that people will expect. And that color is, is basically just pure blue and have it be underlined. So I'd like to make some tweaks like that. And then of course, if we do replace the background picture, we wanna do it with something that still loads quickly in the browser. Um, pictures can take up a lot of space. So let's go and see what we can do as an alternative. So here is an example of a change. So let's imagine the business is Bob's Bikes. Bob's Bikes makes and manufactures bike parts. And maybe this is where their supplier is going to log into Bob's Bikes. Let's just imagine that for a moment. So you see what we've done here is we've traded out the background image. We have made this a square button. I still don't know if I love the shading, but I'll show you how we'll, we can fix that. We squished down this box here to get it to fit in our clip art piece. And we changed these to look like regular HTML icons. So I'm going to show you how you basically turn this into this. And then with that knowledge, you can go ahead and create anything you want in terms of your login screen. So let's go ahead and dive directly into the software. And let me just take a look what else we've got here. Okay, great. Just looking at questions. So here we are in a web project. And this is a web project that we built a few weeks ago. Um, I have two web projects in this workspace. One's called Default, and one is called Webinar Test. Webinar Test is the one that we worked on together. I'm going to go ahead and do a live test on this, and I'm going to go right to the login page. And when that loads, I should see my familiar login page. Whoops, I'm seeing a new login page. Let's go take a look at that component itself, because I have a feeling that was just cached in my browser. And sure enough, it was cached in my browser. Okay, great. So here are the things that we, there are a bunch of things here that we want to change. So the first thing that we'd probably want to change would just be the background image. So I went over to iStock Photo, where I have an account, and I bought an I background image. And I recommend purchasing your background images in stock, especially for websites, because it is not worth uh, getting caught and having to basically pay fines for, for work that isn't yours. And it's, it's not the right thing to do. You can get uh, iStock images for a couple bucks each. They're, they're not expensive. 
So I chose this one, which I thought was kind of cool. It, it's like a bike. It looks like there was a chalkboard or something. And I sort of envisioned, well, I could just plop the um, user interface into that. So the only thing I really had to do to this image was I added uh, this text here. And then when I saved the image out, because I got a very high quality image from iStock, I decided when I was saving, and you can have you have these same options in Photoshop and in other products as well. When you choose JPEG, you can choose what compression level you're going to want. So I think the original was something ridiculous. It was actually it was much higher than that. I think it was like two megabytes or something like that. I don't want people to download a two megabyte picture that's just a background. So I squished it down to about a hundred and what did I get it down to? 160. Probably could have done better than that, but but definitely squish down an image if you're going to replace it. It's just something you should remember because otherwise you're going to be uh, expending a lot of bandwidth really for no for no good reason. Okay, with that in hand, I took the picture and I put it into my web projects control panel so that it appears in my files here. And I called it, uh, let's go to images. Default, we're going to go to images, images, images. Here we go. I think I called this one bumps, bikes. Yeah. And to get that there, there was a couple ways you can do it. I tend to like using this open uh, project folder in Windows Explorer because it just takes me directly to the folder that I need. It just makes it easy for me to copy and paste things into here, especially since I'm used to working with Explorer anyway. So I put that into the component. But the thing I needed to update then was the component so that it pointed to this new place. And so let's go back to the webinar test. That's our original. And we'll take a look at web components. We'll go into the login component. And we're going to edit that. We're going to go into the design. And you'll see the way that this is structured is it's basically a panel navigator with some panel cards in it. And a lot of the sections in these panel cards are actually hidden. They only appear when they're necessary. Uh, for example, login errors is a section which simply doesn't appear unless there are errors that are there and it'll make it appear. Likewise, there are two buttons here for login. One button lets you do a Google login and the other one is just the traditional Alpha Anywhere login. And in this case, we have the Google login one shut off. I would like to take a look though at Google login in a future uh, webinar to show you how that works. All right. So, if we're looking up here at the panel card, you'll notice that the panel card has got in its properties something called an image name, and that is the background image for that panel card. Now, this image is not pointing to an image name. It's actually pointing to, if I open it up, if I can, a whole bunch of, I call it gobbledygook, but basically it's 64-bit encoded uh, picture. You can make a 64-bit encoded picture by simply going to a website. If you simply go to Google and you say 64-bit encoder or something like that, I won't even bother. Uh, you can create a string like that. But I didn't really, and that's fine. And the nice thing about it is that if you're going to use this login component again and again, you just have to, to copy the login component. You don't have to copy an external image. However, I prefer to use um, an image that I've stored separately. That way I can always update the image. So instead of using that, let's pop back into my other project. Oh. Instead of using that, we're going to log in here. I simply used an image called Bob's Bikes. And to do that, I just simply selected image in web projector style. Then I click the select button chose select from web project folder and those were my options right here these three so let's just so you can see them all right i'm going to cancel out of that so that's all it took to to um, replace the image i created an image i made sure that i shrunk it down in terms of resolution so that it loaded quickly uh, i put a label on it i copied it into the project and then i referred to it right here in that panel card under image name so that part is taken care of. The other thing that we wanted to take care of was the username, the, the button for the username. So let's take a look at that. There are two, I'm sorry, the login button called login. There are two here. Um, here's the first one is called button one, and that's actually the one we're interested in. The second one is called login with Google. I'm not using that in this case, so we're just gonna ignore that. So right here, um, 
we have a couple choices here. And it starts out with a button class. Let me show you the old one so that you remember what we're changing it from. Let's go back to my webinar test. And, the button. and you'll see that the button was defined uh, as using the project's style, which I believe is alpha in this case, and it had a sub-theme called capsule uh, raised. And I could have just simply changed that. One of the one of the ones that I like is like primary is actually a nice one, and that's good. Um, but what we did instead was I built my own CSS class for my button. And it was really pretty easy to do, and it's something that's pretty handy to know about. So I'm going to show you how that was done. I'm going to pop over here to default, go back into the login, take a look at that button, and then we're going to go take a look at this button class called Login Button. So when I click on the button class, it shows all the classes that have been applied to this object. In this case, it's just this one. And so I just define this CSS by clicking Edit Local CSS. That opens up this editor, and I basically added this text in myself. So there's the selector, login button plane. I said I don't want it to have a border. I wanted that as the, the blue color that you see there. I want the text to be white. I added some padding so that the uh, there was some space between the text and the top and bottom and edges of the box. I changed the font size and I changed the font weight to bold. I didn't need to bother changing the font family. That's already inherited by the style and it already looks pretty good. So that's all it took there to make that change was creating a new class. Now, when you create a new class, this is something that people mess up all the time. You'll say, you might come in here and say, oh, look at these classes. I'm going to choose this one, login, button plane. You think that you've selected it and you think you've clicked OK, but really you haven't. In fact, you can see here it's blank. And that's because you need to make sure that you've added it to the selected CSS class names over here in order for that to work. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. We're going to put that back in. Nice. So that took care of the logo button. The next thing we wanted to fix was the uh, forget password and the create account hyperlinks. So those are here and I'm gonna leave and exit out. Don't have to save. We'll go back into our old project. And just as a reminder, this is what it looks like when you are previewing it. There is a uh, forgot password and a create account link here at the bottom. And these are fine, except that we wanted the color to be the proper link color and we wanted them to be underlined. So we didn't really have to make big, big styling changes there. Let me show you what we did though to do that. So I'm gonna close. We're gonna go back into the default, pop back into login, and we are gonna go take a look at that forget password link. And so what I did here is I basically changed the hyperlink text style. Let me click on that. And there's actually a builder that you can use for this if you want to. And the builder is handy because, for example, if you didn't remember you know, uh, what things are called, like text decoration or something like that, you can use the, the finder for that. And it'll build out the code for you. So here all I did was set text, text decoration to underline and I set uh, the color to pound zero zero F, which you know RGB means that it's just basically going to be a pure blue color. And so when we preview that, we should see that we get pure blue color with an underlined text as well. Now the next thing we needed to do is we wanted to change basically some size, the spacing that we had here between logo and forget password. It looks fine now, but that's because we've added some spacing to it. And we did that, I believe we did that up here in, oh, never mind. We'll get to that in a second. The next thing we want to take a look at is, oh yeah, the field label. That was an easy one. So field label, user ID. If you want, ever want to find properties up here, it's always good to use this little search box. I'm just going to type in label. There's the label and you'll see I've changed it to email, which is what we wanted to do. And then the last thing, which isn't something that you actually saw on the slide, was is the page title. Let me show you what I mean by that. Uh, here we are in the default project. Let's go back to webinar test. 
and we'll say live test. All right. Let's click on it. And this may be cached. So if it is, then we'll take it, we'll do it a different way. Yeah, this is cached. All right, never mind. Um, actually, but this isn't too bad because this is, it does still have the problem. Up here it says UX. We want this to say something like Bob's Bikes. So how do you change that? Probably a lot of you know how to do that, but let me just show you in case you don't. When you are in the project, in the, um, uh, in your project here, that login page is actually going to be embedded into an A5W page because well, that's just how alpha works. Um, you, no web component runs by itself. It only runs, unless it's like in a preview window, when you're actually running it on the web, it's always embedded inside a web page. And in this case, that web page is called login. And that is created for you automatically uh, when you used the security framework to build out your application. So we're gonna go ahead and edit that. And let's just jump right into the source. And right up here, to add the title to any page, this is just basic HTML is within the head tag you're going to add another tag called title then you're going to type in what you actually want to appear so it's going to be bob's bikes there's that and i'm going to go ahead and save it and let's do another test And there we have it. It says Bob's Bikes up here in the tab like it's supposed to. Uh, and the very last thing was I had to shrink down this box a bit to get it to sort of fit neatly in here. If you remember, the old one was, was pretty wide. And I did that here, default, back in that login component again. Nope, that's not the component, that's the page. Let me switch to pages, from pages to components. Here we go, login. And up here, the container for the login container, I made a change to that style. And I did a couple of things. Um, first of all, I, I moved it up by letting setting a negative margin value. I had to play around with that a little bit to get it right. I decided that it should have a border around it, it should be solid, it should be white, border radius is 10 pixels. This may have actually been created for me. But what I did change was I changed the width and I tied it to a maximum of 300 pixels. And this will actually show up just fine on the phone. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, the other thing I changed was opacity. You don't have to, but that's, that's how transparent it's going to be against the background. Sometimes that's cool if you want to have the background image shine through. In this case, you're only looking at a black uh, at a blackboard, so the opacity just simply means it's a little bit darker. And then I had to tweak the margin on the right again to sort of make it fit neatly within the box. So I made all of those tweaks to that container right up there. So let's go ahead and see what this might look like if we were doing it on a phone. This will just be a simulation. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And again, uh, we went through great effort, uh, well, not great, so, some effort a few weeks ago to make the other application run smoothly on a mobile when you've got a smaller screen size. So let's take a look at this. If you shrink it down, you will see it continues to behave in a way that's still pretty useful. And you still have the full functionality there, which is it. All right, so uh, that's what I had to cover today, but I'm gonna go take a look here through the questions and see what we've got. Um, one question, which is a really great one, one we hear often is list control for the calendar. When is it going to be finished? Um, I don't know the priority for that. I know that the calendar control is still in beta. I know that it doesn't have a builder, but I, I think like the more, but it is available. So I would say that the more sort of questions you want to pass over to our development team, uh, I would highly recommend that and, and sort of, I, I, I'll put in good words too, but it really, it does help to have actual developers say, listen, this is a feature I need. So, so please do percolate that up. You can even just send that email into guides at alphasoftware.com and say, listen, the 
calendar control is something that's important to me and I'll make sure that the, that the right people see it. Uh, I don't yet have questions on Lottie files, but that is definitely in my list of things to get to at guides at alphasoftware.com and I hope to have answers to everything by the end of day Friday. Um, someone asks a question. Oh, this is a good one. I don't know how to do it offhand, but I'll look into it. It says that they have a, a UX that has 10 controls for data entry and each one is, is hidden uh, is hidden until the one before has a value. So in other words, it keeps you know, opening up a new question. It says, can you show how you can do this using a JSON form control? I don't know how to do that offhand, but uh, I will take a look at that for you. Because I think that's a cool question. JSON form controls. All right. Uh, what's the easiest way to change the label color for all controls in a project when using one of the alpha styles? I hope there's a simple style sheet change. Yes, there is. If you want to choose a change a style sheet, I'll go into that a little bit right now. And style sheets can be confusing. It's a powerful feature, but it can be confusing. So in here, we're going to go into the style builder open the web style builder and most people build just using the alpha theme and that is the the system style and what you can do with the system style is you can use it and then in each of your components you can override parts of it for new colors and things like that another thing though that you can do is you can make a copy of the style and you can make a copy and you can make that a global copy so it's going to be available to all of the projects that are contained within your workspace. And that's a pretty helpful thing to do. So for example, I've built one called Alpha Copy 2. Only ones that you have created as global or local, you can't create system ones, but you can copy them into, into global ones. Once they are in a global one, then you can start making changes to that. And you'll wanna start referring your applications or your project to use your copy of that. So let's go into adjust. We'll scroll down. You can find various things here for colors. This is what errors are supposed to be. This is what the foreground is supposed to be. And then you use the web theme builder basically to make to make your adjustments. Um, a lot to go into on the web theme builder. I know that we do have some webinars on that, but if you have questions, send them into guides at alphasoftware.com and we have to, to answer to that. Uh, editable list, how do we make an edit combo list uh, that saves the ID? Edit combo list saves the ID. I am not sure I fully understand that question, so if you wouldn't mind sending that one into guides as well, I will, uh, I'm gonna be able to do that. So. Uh, next one, when are we gonna be able to compile uh, PWAs, progressive web applications. That is an excellent question. I'm going to write that one down and I'm going to send that over to our VP of Mobility, Bob Moore, and see what progress has been made there. Progressive web apps are really interesting. It's a, it's a way of building applications that don't have to be placed into the Google's uh, Play Store or the Apple App Store. Uh, but still have the functionality that apps like that have, like the ability to access hardware and other things. So it is a very um, exciting way of building apps. Um, we talked about it at a webinar, oh, sorry, at a conference, maybe it was just last year. Uh, but I haven't done another, I haven't really done anything else about that here on Webinar Wednesday. So I'll take a look at it and I will ping, I'll ping our developer. Uh, can you change the alpha icon on the title page? Yes, you can change the fave icon. I don't recall how to do that right offhand, or rather, if by the time I figured it out, I will have wasted a lot of your time. So uh, let, I'll, let me make a note about showing that off for next time, how you, how you change the fave icon. Uh, is there an option to default the sub theme to primary for the entire project? I don't think there is, but it would be a great suggestion if you want to put that in, since I believe almost everyone prefers the primary theme to the default sub theme. 
And let's see, that looks like it for questions that I can get to today. Um, that is about it. Hey, guys, thank you very much for joining me today. I appreciate it. I am going to be off. I have an offsite meeting next week, so we will not have a webinar then, but we will return the following week. And then at the end of the month, with any luck, we will have Robin Bennett back, who will have given us a very cool presentation. Um, in the me, I, I say that because I noticed that he just dropped out, so I'm volunteering him. <laughs> so anyway, thanks everyone for showing up. If you do have questions, send them to guides at alphasoftware.com. Until then, take care and stay well. Bye bye.